Hello and thank you for watching our tutorial. In this video, we'll be walking you through troubleshooting SharePoint using our Cloud Ready Synthetics and ServiceWatch browser. One of the leading causes of employee turnover is user frustration. When they aren't able to do their work efficiently, they can lose faith in their support teams. Most organizations that utilize SharePoint heavily have a dedicated app owner focusing solely on making sure SharePoint is working optimally. But there is a lack of insight into issues causing them to spend a lot of time troubleshooting. There is also a lack of visibility into the end user's perspective. From what we've been told by our customers, Without XSurprise, they found that it takes a long time to troubleshoot SharePoint issues due to the lack of telemetry. Because of this, they struggle to figure out if it's SharePoint itself having the issue, the user's device, or the network in between. Most importantly, there's a lack of proactive monitoring. Although Microsoft does provide its users with tools such as the Page Diagnostics for SharePoint tool, it is definitely lacking in terms of usability. This is fine to use while developing SharePoint pages, but lacks when troubleshooting. There's also a lack of end-to-end -end browser metrics. The trace is only available when the tool is ran. It does not continuously collect the network information of SharePoint while a user is using it, unlike ServiceWatch Browser. Another thing to point out is when there is an issue, you won't know about it until the user reports it, whereas our synthetics are constantly monitoring SharePoint. They will proactively notify you of issues when they occur, allowing you to get ahead of issues and outages. Due to these limitations, using the Page Diagnostics for SharePoint tool means you can't fix issues quickly and have to hunt around for the root cause, which takes much longer. Now let's say a user called in reporting issues with SharePoint. When starting off troubleshooting, it's best to check the dashboards to see if the sensors have detected any issues. From the overview, we can look at the SharePoint sensors. If these aren't green, the sensors have detected a problem. So let's just take a look at the SharePoint sensor. If the sensor was experiencing any issues, we could drill into the alarms to see what automatically generated alarms had been triggered. These alarms are configured during the deployment of the sensor and can trigger on errors, performance issues, or both. The error tab will provide you with visibility into errors the sensor has experienced. The most important tabs at the top while troubleshooting SharePoint and OneDrive will be the logon, SharePoint metrics, and connect. On the logon tab, the logon, managed, and federated login times will reflect how long the login process is taking. If the sensor is configured to use multi-factor authentication and there is an issue affecting it, the logon times will be much higher. Always remember to compare the metrics to the crowd as well. If you're seeing a spike for the sensor but the crowd doesn't reflect your environment, you know you're the only one being affected. In the SharePoint metrics tab, you can see the request duration, which if spiking, usually indicates the page itself is performing poorly, whereas SPIIS latency tends to mean poor server performance. On the Connect tab, you'll see time to first byte and connect time, which point to connection issues such as bandwidth. SSL negotiation spikes are typically related to congested networks. The upload and download pages are for tracking the speeds and times of file transfers and how long it takes to search SharePoint for an uploaded file. All of these metrics are available for crowd comparison in the data point details by selecting a segment and if you are seeing any issues in the logon or connect tabs, the network path performance will show you where the slowdowns are occurring from the device running the sensor all the way to the Microsoft infrastructure. Now let's say the sensors were all green and we want to find out why that individual machine is having problems. We'll start with ServiceWatch Desktop. When pulling up a user's machine, you can use the magnifying glass at the top to search for their device name or username to quickly pull them up. You'll be presented with the device experience score and resource scores. If these scores are lower, it could be the device running out of resources, which you can get more visibility into below. If you are not seeing issues with resources on the device, you'll want to check Service Watch Browser. To quickly pull up that user, click into the web scores metrics. Once ServiceWatch Browser pulls up, you can apply a filter for the domains and limit it to SharePoint. If you wanted to see only user's browser data, you can filter by user as well. When scrolling through the ServiceWatch Browser data, you'll be presented with the web experience score on most graphs. The higher the bar here, the better the page is performing. You'll also have the navigation and resource average. This is how long resources take to load and time for that page to load. The request segments indicate the percentage of navigation time spent from the device across the network and the web server. 
This can help you figure out where the slowdown is occurring. The page metrics below graph out how long it takes for the page to start responding during the load. This can indicate an unoptimized page with too many or too large of assets. The last graph indicates the round trip time while navigating through the page. By selecting a data point in the graph, the Network Path Performance tab at the bottom will populate, showing you exactly where the slowdown occurred from the browser or the web page and back. Use this to identify if a proxy is causing the slowdown as well as see if the traffic is routing properly. If not, you may want to look into your DNS configuration. The error tab will list any errors that occurred from the browser. It can help identify broken or missing assets, such as JavaScript and CSS issues. Moving along the tabs, the data point details will provide you with timings waterfall to visualize the full load of the page and have a step-by-step -step view of what is the slowest component of the web request. Long Secure Connect and responses are usually indicative of network congestion. DOM Interactive and DOM Complete lasting a long time typically point to an issue with the page itself. In the transactions at the top, you can track where a user clicked on the page and see how long it took to load. By removing the filter, the Users tab will show the timings of all of the pages or domains being monitored by ServiceWatch Browser to easily compare the browser performance between them and all the request types initiated. The Domains tab will provide you with the same information, but from the ServiceWatch Browser monitored domains and pages rather than from the user. With all of this data available through the CloudReady Synthetix, ServiceWatch Desktop, and Browser, you'll have proactive notifications to resolve issues prior to users reporting them and all of the information needed to expedite troubleshooting issues when your users do report them. That's a wrap for our video. Thanks for watching.